it is always a joy to uh, go through your story because, um, and I know you will mention it, but I just, I, I want to mention it up front because you have battled a lot with the imposter syndrome. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Uh, many of us, especially women, think we are not good enough. And even if we are highly educated and very experienced, we still doubt our own capabilities. Yes. And we need proof and proof and proof that we're actually good enough and actually experts in our field. So do it. Before we go into all of that, take us back to the year before you discovered Zomba Kickstart. Yeah, so before I discovered Zomba, it was uh, 2017. Um, I just, um, yeah, I got out of the parental leave, um, like Mutterschutz mm -hmm. or something in German. Um, I was a freelance copywriter for advertising agencies and for digital agencies. And I have been really successful at that. But somehow I just felt this is going nowhere, you know, with three children. And um, the advertising agencies always started at 10, like working at 10. And I felt like, oh, half, half oh, of that's the great for me. Over. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, when do they work? You know, because my children, um, they had kindergarten until um, 2, 2, 2 p.m., like 2 p.m. and yeah. Yeah. Like some minutes. And I was like, I don't have time. You know, I, I, what, what can I do? I, I don't have time to travel to the ag agencies, to work there, to come back, to get my children. I was so torn, like between everything. And I just somehow felt that the um, agencies, like almost all led by men, somehow didn't book me anymore as much as they used to. Wow. Nobody told me it's because wow. of the children, but I somehow had this feeling that maybe they thought, oh, what if the children get sick, you know, because I was very open that I have children. I didn't yeah. hide them on my website like other freelance copywriters do because they fear exactly that what happened to me. Yeah. And so like I was really open and honest about it. And I felt something has to change. I don't have a perspective anymore. I was super successful. Um, like I earned like quite good money, but I felt that this does not have any future for me so I needed a plan b yeah yeah and you were also teaching uh you were a lecturer at the university as well so uh I know those universities also don't pay so well but no that was more like a that was more like a passion project on the side but all of this was becoming a little bit too much with three yes. children yeah so you know like I'm I'm such a passionate person if somebody says hey I have an adventure for you I'm like yay I'm the first to jump in and this uh, lecturer um, like this, this le lecturer position was such an adventure. And if I think back, this was the precursor of my online business. You know, there yeah. I learned to structure my knowledge, to put it into a framework, to teach it to somebody that they understood it. Yeah. And of course, I didn't get paid so much because like teachers don't get paid, paid so well, but I got paid with experience yeah. and like with, with this knowledge that I can teach. Because when I was younger, I thought like my worst nightmare job is teacher. <laughs> so, and, and then we end up all as teachers. <laughs> yeah, it's so crazy. But this was also part of my imposter syndrome because I thought like I cannot teach. I didn't learn teaching. You know, I don't have a, a I don't know, pedagogic um, yeah. background. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I, I also thought that I should not be able to do it because I didn't study it. You know, I like, like I was not eligible to, to teach yeah. and uh, by learning that, that I was, I was f capable and, and I could do it really well. And I got like super good feedback from, from other professors and from the students. Th this was like the first step. And I still remember when I, when I booked Zomba, I was at the, at the university after the lecture yeah. and I pulled out my credit card. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no, I jump into there because if I can teach here, I can teach anywhere. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. So uh, you joined at the time where actually some Kickstart didn't exist yet. Yes. And uh, so you joined our old program, uh, Samba. And uh, how, what was your experience just watching videos and? <laughs> Did you do anything? <laughs> well, um, I, I still think that I got really like compared to what I was doing before, I was quite active, you know, I, I took the videos, but it was still not enough. Mm -hmm. And and when you like um 
of course, like I did some interviews with uh, with future clients. I did the passionathon back then. I did this. I did that. But then somehow I felt like I was the poster girl for your decision to create Samba Summer School. Yeah, <laughs> I'm always highly educated, very experienced yeah. women. They're watching my videos. They're doing something, but it's almost like. It's like busy doing or dabbling. It's not structured and it yeah. doesn't show much progress or results. Yeah. Because it is such a big step to going from making an interview with somebody to launching a course. You know, this is like, oh, you have to be so courageous if you're doing it on your own. Yeah. So it helped me so much when you announced this um, back then, this Zomba Summer School, which became Kickstart. And then suddenly, like everything shifted. I was like, oh, can I do a course? Well, maybe what could be my topic? And I remember I was still nursing my my little one, my my third child in bed. Like everything was dark. I had my smartphone in my hand, <laughs> nursing my baby. And then I was like, oh, I have the idea. What I, can I have an idea. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like writing Laszlo, my husband, a message while nursing my child. Like, Laszlo, I will do a copywriting course. <laughs> yeah. Well, so you jumped into the first version of Kickstart, which we yeah. called Samba Summer School back then. And you created a course based on where you were in your business back yes. then. Uh, what was the topic of the course? Um, it was creating your website copy and it was quite um, crazy because I put so much content in there. You know, mm -hmm. first week, create your claim, then your about me page, then a landing page for your offer and then the start page. Yeah. <laughs> Four weeks. Okay. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> Sounds like an eight week course, but you still did it. And uh, how many signups, if you remember, did you get? Yeah, I, I still remember. You never forget these numbers. I had no. 117 signups and I had 97 people in my Facebook group. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I was so, so proud of myself. Yeah. <laughs> and you were starting from absolutely nothing. You didn't have an online business. You uh, didn't have an email list. You know, you were working as a freelancer for advertising agencies. Then you don't need an email list. You don't actually... No need a business you're just a freelancer so starting from absolutely nothing 117 signups 97 in the Facebook group you run this course how did it go it was awesome <laughs> so you know in the first week I was like oh, oh my god how am I going to do this you know of course like um uh, I had so many things to learn and in the first week I decided to make the videos live because I could not upload them it was such a hassle and then it turned out that I'm really good at live videos you know otherwise I would not have found this out and since then I'm doing everything live so it was such a steep learn cur learning curve it was such an adventure and again you know I love adventures I love like challenging myself and especially I love learning so much and this was like a first time in a long like like in a long time as a freelancer that I had the impression wow I'm learning again something I'm not just doing what I have been doing what I can yeah. do really well you know like copywriting but I learned so much this made me so happy and it was just like a, I opened the door to a totally new universe like it felt like oh I have a perspective you know I have I have a new new thing that I can, can venture into and mm -hmm this changed everything for me like this uh, kickstart back then this Zomba summer school I think this was the real beginning of my online course you know despite having like six or seven months prior like all these videos and blah yeah. blah blah but this was the real start and this was like uh, you know the start and then and then like a uh, um, like the big bang like bam <laughs> the rocket that takes off <laughs> so you mentioned the word perspective you had no perspective yeah being a freelancer, actually making good money, but long hours and the wrong hours also. <laughs> and uh, and then with Samba Kickstart, you found a perspective. Yeah. But you are pulling out your credit card there and after, after teaching a lecture at the university. What hesitation did you have? <laughs> oh, how much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, I was full of um, limiting beliefs. Yeah. And uh, although I'm like this adventurous kind of person, I'm also like, 
always doubting myself, you know, like also in the advertising agencies, oh, is this idea good enough? You know, despite me winning all these awards as a copywriter, I was always like, oh, is this good enough? Oh, I will like, uh, uh, they will, in the next project, they will find out that I'm just an imposter, that I'm not as good as everybody thinks, that I'm not worth my hourly rate, blah, 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 blah. And um, of course, now when I booked Zomba, I, I felt like, oh, pff, like, oh, pff, can I do this? Like, um, what can I teach? You know, if I'm writing copy, it's still like something that is a creative process. And I was afraid I could not put it into a framework. Like I could not really tell somebody how to be like this creative or how to create a good claim for the business, how to write great blog articles. I always had the impression or the feeling I have to do it myself, that it yeah. gets done properly, you know, that it's it's a good uh, result. And um, this took me a long time like, to overcome because, oh, you know, it's like this um, this creator's limiting belief, like only I can create this awesome piece of whatever, <laughs> but it's not true. So how did you overcome it in that moment where you decide to sign up? What? Yeah, you know, um, I knew I, I had to I had to jump into this adventure and um, I knew that this was like a crossroad in my life. Like, do I go into this adventure? Or, or don't like or whatever you know like I can I can like um continue my way my my freelancing job like uh, it would still have worked some years I don't know how long it would have worked you know I would have had some kind of way with that but I knew that I wanted to have a change and if I want to have a change I have to change something you know I have yeah. to go into another like go, go another track in my life mm -hmm. and I just knew okay this is like I took it as an experiment because I didn't know quite what I was getting into <laughs> back then or what you wanted um, maybe you didn't know yeah, what you wanted yeah. maybe yeah yeah so you know back then it would have never crossed my mind that I could become like now um, an expert for blogging because I have been blogging like years but it didn't occur to me that this could maybe become a business idea. Yeah. So um, back then I was just like, yeah, maybe I can do some better marketing for myself. You know, I didn't have all these ideas. They came in the process, like trust the process, yeah. but I knew I have to do it to, to, to change something to the better in my life, in my business, mm. in my um, also like in my um, relationship to my husband, because um, this relationship was really like um, uh, in a different, position because I was working so much yeah <laughs> and you know because everything was like on my shoulders I was the breadwinner of the family back then and I had to work so many hours I I had the three children I had this lecturer position which didn't get paid so well so it was a really difficult situation for me and I knew now I can change it let's change try. it I have nothing yeah. to lose yeah so you run this course, it went all well, uh, and then you made an upsell to another program. What was that? Uh, my first blogging course. <laughs> Yay, finally. Um, yeah, I made a 12-week blogging course, and four have bought, like conversion of 4%, and I was like, yay, 4%. Woo. Yeah, well, um, mom, some, some people watching or listening to this might think, oh, only four sales? Oh, that was incredible. No, that was awesome. You know, it was my first money that I earned with online business. Mm. And I, it was like a totally new, like, oh, people pay me something like, but teaching them online, like, how can this be? I don't have to go to them and write them copy and deliver yeah. it to them. They can they will do, do it, it themselves, themselves and I can teach them how to do it. And it was like, wow. And what did you charge for that first course, if you remember? Uh, something around 800 euro or so yeah, I don't so remember that was all I know. Decent money yes it was and it was enough to to get my um, investment back and this was yeah. like oh wow <laughs> wow <laughs> and it didn't stop there because I made two more launches in the year and at the end of the year I made my first like barely but it was five figure launch so yeah this was wow amazing. so basically in half a year you really had established a good online business and you had done, <clears throat> excuse me, two more campaigns, launches and sold more. Yes. But your, your business has developed over time. We're talking still about 2018. We've had 2019, yes. 2021. So if you can kind of in a summary explain what has happened, how does someone go from being a copywriter, 
teaching people almost everything about copywriting and now you are the go-to blog expert in Germany. Yeah, it's still like it's it's a it's like a miracle to me, you know, like how did this develop in such a short time? It's like wow to me. Like even it's it's just amazing. So in 2018, I also hired my husband on May 1st. He he joined my my business. We we didn't earn any any money until then, you know, it was just like a a bet on our future and online business that yeah. he joined me and it turned out to be a very good decision. So this was like the the one of the biggest things in 2018. Then I made the first launch um, with this Samba Summer School. And then I launched this product again in fall and making, I don't know, six or 8,000 euro. I don't remember. And mm -hmm. then launching a blog or some kind of content course at the end of the year, making like 10,000 euro. So this was like, oh, it's possible to earn money. And um, but I still was like, um, I still worked too much. And yeah. in 2019, I had like this, oh, now I have to decide like which which way should my business go? Yeah. And then in 2019, I, I started to um, fade out my freelancing business. Mm -hmm. I started to um, fire my first clients, which felt like, oh, really like scary at the beginning, you know, because I, I, I relied on the income. But then I saw, okay, if I don't invest enough time and enough brain power into my online business, um, this won't take off. Yeah. And in 2019, I created several like different ideas. I launched several times. I also did a uh, kickstart or Zomba Summer School another time, like the second time, because it, I love I love adventures and because I, I wanted to hone my skills about launching and everything. So this was a newsletter course back then. So you were creating and, a brand new course. Um, this is a question that's yes. popping up a lot when people ask us about Zomba yeah. Kickstart. Are you running the free four-week online course again and again? And I always say, no, you only run it once unless yeah. you want to create a brand new course, which is your case, the newsletter course. Yes. That was your second yes, right. kickstart round. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So I just wanted, like, it was just an experiment. I wanted to try it. And um, I wanted also to, to be, again, part of this group because launching in a group is so much easier and so much more fun than launching by yourself. And this is also something that, that really helped me immensely in Kickstart. And uh, so 2019 was the year we bought this house, this house, <laughs> and we moved. <laughs> so, you know, we finally had like the, the amount of money um, that, that I could buy a house, you know, this in 2018. That's amazing. Year, so. That's only a second year of online business and you can start buying yeah. a house. <laughs> wow like, whoa, how did that happen yeah yeah everybody told me to to sell my my apartment in Stuttgart and I was like no I want to keep I want to keep the apartment I want to buy this house I don't want to decide we always this you have to decide this way or that way and I'm like I want to have both yeah. so I have both <laughs> yeah so 2020 um or December 2019, something very special also happened because we had a group call and you told me, Judith, you need finally a freebie. So it's now, now do it. And I was like, oh, okay, Sigrun said I need a freebie. So I set up a freebie in two days with Canva. Yeah. And uh, I had this idea for a long time in my head, but I still hesitated, you know, imposter syndrome. Is this freebie good enough? I always had this limiting belief. It has to be perfect. It has yeah. to solve all problems of my whole target group, blah, blah, blah. So I finally did it. And we made Facebook ads like, you know, in, two, in two days, everything, bam, 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 bam. It was two weeks before Christmas. And then we put it out there. And in six weeks, 2,000 people downloaded it. Wow. <laughs> My that first is obviously freebie. a good freebie. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember it was the, the, the New Year's Eve when we crossed the 1,000 on my email list. Yeah. You know, New Year's Eve 2019 to 2020. So in 2020, this freebie helped us making five-figure launches. In 2020, we only had five-figure launches. You know, before I was struggling to, to make six, 8,000 euro launches, and now everything was five figures. Oh. Yeah. So now we finally crossed the six-figure mark in 2020. And um, yeah, I also created um, um, the next year, like... Um, 2021, yeah. I created the Content Society, which is my blog course that I'm running now, because until then I created something and it was not, it was okay, but it was not good enough. I always yeah. wanted to tweak it, to optimize it. And then I always like created and destroyed the product, created, destroyed, created, destroyed. Yeah, this so is important. 
methods too. Some yeah. people think uh, I've been showing the customer journey that you have a starter course, signature course, group coaching, but there are so many ways. Once we start our business, we realize actually afterwards what we want. We don't know before yeah. what we want. We we haven't worked with our ideal clients. We haven't created the program. Once we create the program, we might love it. We might not love it so much. So we change it. And you know, it's it it you need to be brave to do that, but uh it also helps to have support to when someone says, Yes, you can go ahead and do it. You can just retire a course and you can create a new one if that feels right to you. Yeah. So I had this course which brought us almost 100,000 euro in 2020. And I decided to, to retire. retire it. Yeah. And everybody in my surrounding was like, oh, Judith, how can you do that? It is so successful. <laughs> so, um, we yeah, evolved. so I we decided changed. I needed something yeah. better. Yeah. Yeah. So I created something better. And this was our first six-figure launch. Yes. You know? The, the turn of the year from 2020 to 2021. 20 to yeah. Yes, we had our first six figure launch, and I was like, oh, how is this possible? <laughs> so now I have the Content Society, which is my blogging course, and I have this now in the third year now. Yeah. And this is the first product that survived like one year, and not only one year, but it's now it's in its third year. But yeah. this was also like a, an evolution. I, did not think this was possible in the beginning. You know, I also feared making a one year course because oh, so long, so much responsibility, blah, blah, blah. But then, you know, I went to the evolution as an online business entrepreneur, and then I felt ready to do that. And then it was just amazing. And with this product, we have like five and six figure launches all the time. And like last year we made, I don't know, 400, 50,000 or so I, I I don't I have to take a look at the numbers but it's like a number that I could not have imagined as a freelancer because as a freelancer I was earning like between 40 and maybe 60,000 euro and now this is something that you make like in a in a week launch yeah how like, can this possibly you, you like, make wow. your annual income in a week yeah yeah with your launches it's crazy <laughs> it is crazy but I think I love this that you uh evolved over time it took uh, about three years to get to your program that you absolutely love doing and you're going to do it for years to come. And I think that's important that people understand that their first year, their first courses, they're likely to change. You know, some people are lucky and find the perfect course idea that they will run for years, but many of us will change over time. And that's just absolutely normal. Yeah. So, Judith, you have one signature course you know you don't have a starter course signature course group coaching program mastermind one-on-one -on -one. uh so this is also an example that you can have one amazing program but you could not have started with it on day one you needed a four-week course you actually created two free four-week courses and some other courses to get to this dream program that you have today which you have a beautiful business and it's so amazing to just have one program. Yes. And it's so simple, you know, because I also thought like back then I need to have this and that. I need to have these steps and everything. And now I see like, I don't need to have this. Like everything is so flexible. If you do it right and the way that, that it fits you and your personality, everything is all right. So I don't have like all these starter or trip fires or whatever. Like I have some freebies. I have my challenges. Then I have my, the content society. And that's it. You know, I don't even offer a mastermind because um, I want to put all my effort and all my energy into the content society, into this one product. And maybe one day I will have more. I don't limit myself there right now. I just like to say that right now I'm really happy with this super simple business that I created. But this was, of course, like um, I created a lot to see that it's even easier if it's simple. So, yeah, yeah. we often need to do that. So let's see if we have some questions. Uh, any questions? How, how often do you launch now? Yeah, so now I'm launching like two or three times a year. Mm -hmm. And we have always one big launch. And this was always in December. Like it's, it's my huge challenge where we block our year in review. And this is my biggest launch of the year. This is like since a few years, always six figures. And I'm really happy about this. And um, what are my tools? I have to say that I have been banned from Facebook in November and um, because of some really crazy stuff. 
And um, we, we couldn't do this last launch with Facebook ads. But mm-hmm. still, we managed to get our list, like to, to create the biggest launch list that we ever had. And we still managed to make an amazing six-figure launch. So, um, but I also use, of course, ads and I, of, of course, use my list. This year, I want to dive more into like YouTube and video ads and all these kinds of things. Yeah. So this is another new adventure that I'm really like amazed by and want to learn about. So yeah, we always look for new ways to to get leads yeah. and people into our launch. And we have to see it, like Judith mentions, see it as an adventure. Where do you find your ideal client? How do we attract them? Uh, how can we attract them with different types of content and ads, but also different channels and not just rely on one channel because we need to make sure that we not have all our eggs in one basket. Uh, did you do Google ads or have you done no. Google ads? No. Yeah. No, only classical SEO, search engine optimization. This is like the, the best way to me also, like totally organic. Everything we did was totally organic this this time, this last launch. Yeah, this last launch was completely organic. Yeah. You can also do that if you've been in business for a while, you have a community of clients that love you. If something goes wrong with Facebook or any other channel, actually, you can ask for help and get people yeah. to help you and you can have the most amazing launch ever. Uh, yes. Also a year ago, uh, my energy was super low. I was helping my parents because they got sick in Spain. And I emailed a few competitors, even women doing exactly the same thing as me and asked for help and they emailed their lists. You know, yeah. it's, it's actually in a crisis that we also come together and help each other. So I think that's beautiful to see how that worked out for you, Judith. That was amazing. It was amazing. Uh, some other questions. Do you have some other questions for Judith? Yeah, so many people found me because of my Facebook ban. It's yeah. so funny, you know, Facebook bans you. And then people are like, oh, this is like an interesting story because so many people were sharing my story. I wrote a blog article, you know, blogging. I wrote a blog article about this, about this ban. And uh, so many people like just found me through this and yeah. by me being more active on LinkedIn because this was a platform that that I still had. So you always find a plan B. There's always a plan B. This is nothing to worry about. If someone is like, oh my God, I'm not going to start my online business because some Facebook might marry. Entrepreneurship is adventure yeah. uh, and it's finding solutions when there is a door blocked. There's another door there that you can open. And sometimes you don't see the other door until this yeah. door is blocked. Yes. So discovering LinkedIn, discovering YouTube, there are so many ways. Your ideal client is all over the place. And I think we have the last question, Judith. Uh, do you still have your first ideal client or has your ideal client changed over time? Yeah, well, um, this is a very good question. I was thinking about this too. Um, I think it took me a long time to find my ideal client because I was so reluctant to um, focus myself on blogging. You know, I always thought if I focus myself, if I, if I niche too much down like to blogging, um, I will like not attract any more people, you know, but then I, I niche down and I have now my perfect ideal client. It's the dynamic blogger, which I created, you know, I created this, this um, word and I totally, I, I exactly know her. I know what she wants. I know what she, what she aspires. And uh, now I have this ideal client. And the fun fact is that I already attracted these ideal clients in my very first launch in 2018, but I could not grasp what, mm. what made my ideal client so special. Yeah. So I had them all around me. You so know, you had like, your ideal client, in, but here. you you hadn't defined the person, but they were hovering around yeah. you. So they probably discovered you first. Yes, yes, and it was it was like that. They showed me what they wanted from me. They told me, Judith, we want to have a blogging course from you, and I was like, really? Well, how how can I teach you blogging? <laughs> it's just been my hobby for fifteen years. Who am I to teach blogging? <laughs> yeah. Wow. We don't see it ourselves. People need to tell us. Yeah. And Judith, you are the absolute expert in blogging. And I'm so glad you found it. And what do we say? The riches are in the niches. The having the courage to niche down finally created this beautiful business. Judith, thank you for sharing your story and having time with us this morning. Thank you, Zikon. <laughs>